Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you five creative color effects for your next video or project that are super easy to do with the built in effects in Adobe Premiere Pro. So, we're going to be going over channel blurs, leave color isolations, tints, invert effects, and hue and saturation rotating effects. Before we begin working, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe below to stay tuned for all of my new videos and leave a like on it if you've been enjoying these videos. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Justin Odisho if you don't want to miss out on any of the behind the scenes and live streams on there. So as we begin, all the effects I'm going to be using are going to be found in the effects window. And let's start with one called the channel blur. This is in the blur and sharpen folder, but you can always use this search bar at the top to find certain effects. So the effects we're going to be building are more creative based. They're not really Lumetri color, color correction or color grading wise effects. But for the first effect, we're going to create that 3D glasses channel splitting in one step with the channel blur effect. So let's click and drag this onto our clip. And you see we now have the channel blur effect in the effects control panel. And all we need to do is increase the blurriness of any one of these channels and we'll get a unique blurry 3D glasses effect. So if I increase the red blurriness, you can see what happens is it blurs only the red color channel, which leaves a bit of that red and blue color fringing that's happening. I like to check repeat edge pixels so you don't get any weirdness around the edges. But another cool thing you can do is make it only horizontally blur, so it's a bit of a motion blur, or only vertically blur. And it gives you that popular 3D type of color fringing without needing to split all three channels like I've shown in previous tutorials. That can be good for a little bit more flexibility, but for a simple effect, this is nice. Also, you can use keyframes with this and any of the effects I'm going to show you to keyframe them on and off and make them unique to your video. So you could start at zero with a keyframe, increase to a certain amount, and then lower back to zero, and you get a cool blur hit that happens. So with the green, you get the purple and green fringe. With the blue, you get the yellow and blue fringe. And if you put two of them together, then you start to get a really blurry effect. So play around with that if that's what you like, but that gets a little too fuzzy in my opinion. Next up, let's talk about the leave color effect. And this is how you can do a real simple color isolation. So if I find the leave color effect under color correction, I can click and drag it on the clip. And this will allow me to pick one specific color. So you can use the ink dropper if you want, or you could actually just pick with the color picker. So I'll ink drop the red on this shirt here. I press OK. And that's a pretty distinct color in this frame. And we should be able to desaturate everything else except all the red colors in this clip. So the things we can do is amount to decolor. And if I increase that, you'll see it'll lower the saturation. But it's also picking up some of the red of the brick. And some things that you can play around with to adjust that is the tolerance. The higher you make the tolerance, the more colors it'll pick up around the family of this red color. And the more you increase the edge softness, it'll feather the edge of your color selection. So start with a low tolerance, maybe arrow up to see what starts getting colored in. At this point, you can see the shirt is fully colored in, but the bricks are not at about 12%. And then increase the softness as you need to keep a smooth, clean looking image. Another thing you can adjust is the way that Premiere matches the colors. So instead of using red, green, blue, you can use just the hue which can let you get a little bit more accuracy in some cases. Next, let's talk about the tint effect. So I'm going to find tint under the color correction as well and click and drag it onto my clip. Also, keep in mind if you've made it to this point of the tutorial, you could always go to your project, go to File, New, Adjustment Layer, and be applying any of these effects onto adjustment layers instead of directly on the clip. And this will allow you to expand them over multiple cuts and have the same effect still be applied. So with that said, if you're familiar with gradient maps in Photoshop, this is basically like a gradient map. You get to map the shadows and the blacks to one color and the whites and highlights to another. So by default, it's black to white, but you could make it something fun and interesting like a dark green for the black and a lighter blue for the highlights. This will remind you of possibly those Spotify or Apple Music type of advertisements. And another interesting thing you can do is lower the amount. So right now it's at 100% solid. But if I want to use this more as a coloring tool, I can just lower that to maybe 50 or lower percent and just get a unique tint to the video. This will allow you to kind of grade the shadows and the highlights in a fun way. 
But as you see in a lot of those Apple Music or Spotify type of advertisements, these can make a great base layer for you to apply text and other information on top of, and it makes the video a bit less distracting, puts it kind of in the background in a colorful way. So if I was to apply any text, it really stands out. It'd be a fun little advertisement or segment of whatever video that you're doing. So that's the tint effect. Definitely good to know, useful in some situations. And next, let's talk about the invert effect. So if I go to my effects and I search for one called invert, this is a very classic effect. You've probably seen it in every video editor has this. But the cool part in Premiere is not only can you invert the entire image, you can just invert one specific color channel like the red, green, or blue. And they have all these other options for you as well, like just inverting the hue or just inverting the luminance. So you can get cool abstract effects with this as well as using it mathematically and technically to color correct certain issues. You've also got the only other option is blend with original, which lets you blend it from zero to 100. And if you're interested, I've got a full separate tutorial on how to create some cool flashing effects using keyframes on the channel and blend with original. And lastly, finishing it off in another more abstract way, let's search for one called HLS and you'll find the color balance HLS, which stands for hue, lightness, saturation. It's actually a color correction tool, which lets you adjust the hue and the lightness and saturation. But the cool part is you can adjust the hue in rotations of 360 degrees, which is actually just mapping out this color bar from zero to 360 degrees and you can rotate through it. So a cool one that I've seen in some very popular music videos is to rotate through the hue in an animated manner. So if we start at the beginning of the clip or wherever, add a keyframe and then at the end of the clip, rotate through maybe three or four or five degrees of that color wheel, you'll see it'll quickly transition from one color to the next, which is an interesting abstract effect to play around with in the least. So those are five unique color effects that you can play around with in Adobe Premiere Pro. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like on it and let me know what you thought in the comments and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for all of my new future videos. You can follow me on social media at Justin Odisho to stay tuned with me. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.